Uh, the last time you hosted Saturday Night Live, and I know I'm jumping around, but Sorry. I, I need to jump around. Sure. I'm like a, a Mexican jumping bean <laughs> in Mexico. The last time you hosted Saturday Night Live, yeah. you did this great monologue about child molesters mm -hmm. and how it must be fun because they keep doing it to, despite the fact that they could have paid the worst penalties in society. Right. Right. And it was a funny monologue and it's clearly jokes, yeah. but you caught shit for it. I guess. You kind of did, but that didn't bother you? It did, no. Did, did, did they, because they do a dress rehearsal, did you yeah. do that monologue in the dress sure. rehearsal? You did. Sure. Did Lorne come to you and have some trepidation? I, you know, you really got to give those people credit. Because, they sure do. Yeah. Uh, that's about as incendiary, I don't know if I'm using that word right, It's a, that's a tough one to sell, and I thought, you know, the thing is, you don't have, they, they, don't, they don't talk to me about my monologue. Right. They don't come watch it in a club uh, no. or anything. They just go, you know, whatever you're going to do. And the dress rehearsal is their only shot at it. And you really could hide stuff from them. And yes. you really could. And just comedians do it. have done that. Sure, they have. And, and, and I the, always had, I always would strategically think there's one or two things I don't even want to discuss it. So I'll just do it live. And then what are you going to do? Everybody and shrugs. Right. But I thought I better. I gotta show them this. It's just not fair. <laughs> no, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, they and do I showed it to him, and they didn't say anything. They they asked for. Um, I'm trying to remember. They asked for one adjustment, and he didn't ask for it. You know um, who asked for it? Jared from Subway was offended. Of the, he asked for <laughs> it. That's right. <laughs> I, don't I don't remember what the adjustment was, but it was minor. It wasn't the the, the subject. How shocking Jared from Subway turned out to be a uh, pedophile. Why? Why is that shocking? Well, I mean, did you, you know Did you know him to be a non-pedophile before well, that? Well, you know what it Anybody is. could be a When I see somebody who hits the lottery the way this kid did, he yeah. lost some weight. A lot of people lose weight in this country. He right. loses weight, Jared, from Subway. Right. And he ends up making millions. He was a multimillionaire yes. from the fucking Subway commercials. Yes. That's it. And I always think, I don't care what you have wrong with you. When you get a yeah. couple of million for doing absolutely nothing but losing weight, you right. behave yourself. I no, guess. He I, set but the thing is, up. yeah, but you're proving the point of my bit that I did. <laughs> right. That no matter what, if you, it must be he's got to get that kid <laughs> right. fucked. No matter how much million. Which just tells you it must be amazing. It must, it must be, be a huge bit. <laughs> did you get a lot of Even hate mail? Jared. <laughs> Even Jared, who had Even it made. You know, you're right. It does prove your point. That's right. When you uh, do something like that, yeah. um, um, uh, did you get a lot of hate mail? Well, I, you know, it's funny. You used to be, you got letters, remember, some yeah, years ago. you don't ago, get that anymore. You get your little letter opener and you go, oh my. Now I if really you get a letter, you really know you upset them because yeah. nobody writes a letter. No, no, that's right. I, You know, that's funny. A lot of, I would run into people. I knew that it would upset people, but I thought it was still worth saying. And I worked very hard on the monologue. To well, you sure. say you worked hard on the monologue. Do you go to clubs Yeah, I just repeat it over and over again. Just keep getting it. Get it. Just make sure that the logic is tight mm -hmm. and that the bit makes sense and that I believe it and that it's right. well executed. Because you can flub it up. you got to keep right. working and, and refine and it. And honestly, the re dress rehearsal, when I did the bit in the dress rehearsal, I, it was 100%. And that audience loved it. Second show when I did it on the air, about 70%, so it wasn't as good as it, as it could have been. Is it a mistake? My, I got tight. You know, yes. It's a, is it a show. it's a live show, and is it a mistake maybe to do it in dress rehearsal? Because you, you kind of blow your load in dress rehearsal. You hope it's going to go bad. It's a weird kind of thing. You can't... It's luck. Right. For a live show, it's luck. You can't... You, you're there or you're not. It's like when you watch a, a boxing match and there's a great fighter and he just sucks that night. And afterwards he goes, I just couldn't get... I just couldn't get... You just can't get to the spot you need to in your mind. When you say that in dress rehearsal you hope it kind of goes badly, it's because then you feel jinxed. Oh my God, it went so great. That's right. I'm going to get on live television mm -hmm. and I'm never going to be able to be as That's good. That's right. Almost 100 percent uh, of my life dress rehearsals that are bad lead to good shows and then the opposite is true good dress rehearsals lead to bad shows the so way do, the you way know? you work bother me or but you must have a thick skin because you were in comedy clubs for you know i, I would say definitely. stuff bounces definitely, off yes. you more than a typical show that's runner. right that's right and and also what i've always trafficked in is material that it's it's subjects that people don't want to usually talk about that yeah. aren't easy to talk about so what i'm really used to doing because I do it several hundred times per night <laughs> right. in my life, most nights of my life, is starting to say something and watching people tighten and get upset. And knowing that after they're upset, they're going to laugh and they're going to be glad that we went down that road. Yeah, I mean, the SNL hosting was the best example of that. Yeah, yeah. You mean the which one? The the um, last one you did. Yeah, yes. The the uh, the That monologue about uh, the child molester. Yeah, uh was you could literally hear the audience yeah you could hear the sphincters tightening as you, you were like oh no totally and, and I, I'm used I was to that and I'm going, used to that oh no don't don't yeah, no don't. Louis no 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 back off no no please no See, like, that's me, how I felt watching it which yes, is what you wanted that's right well to me that's a worthwhile trip 
Yeah. Uh, and everything that happens afterwards is okay. People have their reaction and everybody doesn't have to agree on what something is. You know, it's like when you read pieces on the internet that are like how he got it wrong, like the ones that always start with why this, 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 this. Yeah. Well, according to you, and I don't know, you, I think you're in your 20s and yeah. also you're selling this you're selling this click for money. There's so many reasons not to take it seriously. Do you know what I mean? And every time that I've met people who write for sites like that, they kind of roll their eyes and go, well, they make me write this stuff. You know, like nobody really means it. And I try they to tell that like to my professional friends. professional wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. When, yeah, it's like if two wrestlers got mad at each other, like, hey, man, you body slammed me. Well, yeah. first of all, no, I didn't. We remember we rehearsed <laughs> yeah. it. I mean, it's, it's a joke. So, like, when I have friends that get attacked and by the blogosphere and they get scared and they're like, I don't know what, I'm like, well, it, it does, the person that wrote this about you didn't mean it. They actually didn't mean it. When somebody writes, this was racist or this was inappropriate, they don't, I don't believe that most of them actually mean it. They're yeah. just, crafting something to feed a um a dopamine rush that certain people have to to sell clicks it's all to, it's, it's 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 a click economy it's an outrage it's an outrage economy it's an economy of outrage every time you read a story that's supposed to make you mad it's supposed to make you click you're a sucker whenever you add your comments to yeah, that woman shouldn't pretend to be black in Spokane, Washington, who I never heard. You know what I mean? Yeah. This thing that affects three people that is now a global concern, it's money. There's an economy that sold that story and well, made sure everybody in the world would click on it for money, money, money. So I don't buy into that. I don't buy into that feeling. But as a comedian, if you're going to do a joke about child molesting, you have to know that there's going to be tons of people that are just going to go, I don't want to hear that. And I did it on Saturday Night Live, which is not, you know, a late night comedy club. That was a high wire act. That was a, that was a very mainstream place to do that joke. Um, I was going to say, it's like in, I love the Fast and Furious movies. Yeah. There's only a couple trained race car drivers in the world. Yeah. Who could go on SNL and do that bit. Yeah, I, I mean, like. I was very, I, I, I ran the set many times in clubs before I did it because I wanted to know that it was uh, airtight logic-wise. And to me, I stand behind it because um, it's all true. I mean, it's just yeah. it's just a truth. It's maybe a truth that you don't like to hear, and that's okay. It's okay for you to be upset that I said it, and it's okay for you to dislike me for it. It's okay for you to say that's it, I'm done with that guy because he said this thing. That's your choice. You can, but lim also you can limit a... your culture any way that you want to or you, you can comment on it any way that you want. In the end, human beings continue to choose comedy as an important part of their cultural diet. And part of making that choice is to get upset once in a while. It helps us, I think. What helps you as a performer when people know that you're going to you're going to push the envelope every once in a while. Yeah, and that's the other thing is that I'm starting to reach more and more people. Which is a good thing and a bad thing. Well, it's a good thing. And, and then it's also a, a, it's a ter it's something you got to be careful about. Yeah. So to me, the thing isn't to say, now that I've got a bigger audience, I've got to cool it. That's a huge mistake. And it's also not honest. And you won't continue to be inspired, which means you won't be able to make anything anymore. So when I did SNL, I thought I'd done it twice. Uh, the first time I did it, I, do, I just sort of... The monologue to me is what I do there. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I hang around for the sketches. The Lincoln thing was great, though. I mean, that was That was a cool. big win Seth Meyers completely yeah. invented that. Yeah. But uh, the first time I did it, I told a story about an old lady in an airport. I did a very basic monologue. Then the second time I did it, I kind of dug a little deeper and talked about um, uh, religion and life a little more. And then the third time I did it, I thought, okay, people are getting used to seeing me do this. Uh, they don't really know who I am. And... <laughs> They don't really know what I'm capable of in terms of what I'm willing to talk about. Uh, so I should tell, I should be, fa I, I, I mean, I know this sounds weird, but I thought it's, it's only fair to do the child molester joke if I'm going to yeah. continue doing this show. I, I can't go down a road where like, I change who I am for them because then they'll, it's like they're getting fooled. It's not, I'm not this filtered guy. Uh, you know, I'm not a polite comedian. So, uh, and also if they come and watch, if they, if they like me on SNL and they go watch one of my specials, they're going to have a heart attack, some of these people. You know what I mean? So, so I thought I should make a real account for myself. This bit is in my mind. This bit is frontwards. I had been doing it. Like this is the bit that is 
itching inside of me right now. That 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 whole bit that there was this thing from the Middle East to the child molesting, and it also came out of a personal story. There was a whole shape to it, and I thought this is the things I'm doing right now. So it's only fair to lay it out and just let the chips fall. If it turns into that, the outrage from the monologue would have taken me down a couple of pe- a few pegs. I thought that's appropriate. I want to be in. I want to be in the right place in the culture. I don't want to be bigger than um, I ought to be. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, you've laid out the a lot of.